Hello and welcome to Tech and More. So, there are multiple automation tools in the market, but the most talked about is Selenium, that to Selenium Web Driver, right? Now, as part of the ongoing series that is Salesforce Automation Testing, welcome to another video wherein we'll be talking about test automation with Selenium, the tool that we'll be learning in the entire course as well, right? So, without wasting any more time, Let's straight away go and talk about the four sections that are a part of this video. The first section is what is Selenium? In very, very simple terms, Selenium automates browsers, right? So uh, when you are performing actions on a website, on a browser, you can automate all those actions. For example, let me take you to a sample website, this one, right? So do you see this is, this is username? So for example, if I write here, Tam, and I write on the password and click on login, right? Or let's suppose if I click on services, uh, I scroll down, I scroll up, scroll right side, all these actions which I'm doing manually right now with the cursor, I can go ahead and automate these using Selenium WebDriver. So using Selenium or its types, I can go ahead, script that, uh, you know, write the code or write the script once, uh, tell the steps to the system. And then I simply click on a button and it executes or it performs all the actions on its own. That is what Selenium does. Now, primarily it is for automation, uh, sorry, primarily it is for automating web applications for testing purposes, but it is certainly not limited to that. So what else can it do? It can also go ahead and automate boring web-based administration tasks. Now you might have this question that, you know, what can be these tasks? So for example, as an admin, you have to go every day to a website and you have to, you know, create some data, fill out a form, uh, a repeated task, which is very repeated, can be done again and again. For example, posting a couple of posts on some social media platforms every day or, uh, you know, running a campaign or anything. So all these things which are repeated, same steps can be easily automated using Selenium, right? So this is what the, the, the you know, the USP of Selenium is, right? Now talking about the types, there are four types of Selenium. The, the, the first one is ID, the second is RC, third is a driver, and fourth is grid. Now you might encounter these types in at a lot of places on the internet, but the most common and the most talked about and the one we'll be talking about in the entire series will be web driver, right? So that is what Selenium is. That is what it type is. Now let's go on to the next section. The next section talks about the limitations, right? So, uh, of course, any tool, anything comes with its own set of limitations. So I have listed down a couple of it. Uh, the first one is desktop applications cannot be automated. And if you remember in the last section, we did discuss this, that Selenium automates browsers. Learn this three words, Selenium automates browsers. So all in all, if it only automates browsers, it cannot automate anything which is on the desktop. Number two, technical expertise is required, especially in the case of Selenium WebDriver, because uh, you have to learn to uh, code in some programming language. It can be C hash, it can be Java, it can be Python, it can be any language, but you have to learn it. So, uh, you know, <laughs> technical expertise is very important. That is, that is, and that, that creates, uh, you know, that adds to the complexity as well. Then number three is no official support. That is, it is not a paid tool. It is an open source tool, right? So in case if you have any problems or any troubles, you, you have no organization to reach out to. So that, but that doesn't mean that you will have no support. Selenium WebDriver is one of the most commonly used automation tools in the entire world. So you have a very strong community of automation test developers and you can find numerous content on the internet about it. Number four is no built-in OR. This is something which you would not be able to correlate right now. So we'll discuss it in the upcoming videos. Then fifth is it cannot test images. That is, for example, if you want to test out the width, height, or, uh, you know, uh, let's suppose pixels and all these things of an image, you cannot test it. So some sort of integration is required, which is mentioned on the, on the, on the, pointer but honestly you did you, you need not do it right now you just need to know that it cannot test images then last is no built-in test management capacity that is when you automate when you run these tests when you execute them you analyze the reports you encounter some bugs you your those bugs have to be logged independently they cannot be logged using this in particular tool that is the bug logging is not automated so these are a couple of limitations but again if you have any other limitation in your mind, if you have encountered any, feel free to comment because you know we are a community and we are here to learn from each other. So these are a couple of limitations. Now let's go on to the next section. That is, let us talk a bit about Selenium Web Driver. That is the next section. So Selenium Web Driver is a framework that permits you to execute cross-browser tests, which enables you to use a programming language 
in creating test scripts. Now, this might puzzle you a bit because, of course, this is not very easy to understand. So, all in all, this is your Selenium web driver. This is your browser specific driver, and this is your browser. That is uh, the, the actual browser that you're using, right? So, uh, Selenium web driver basically, when you code, when you write down your test case, it interacts with the browser because, of course, when you are writing a code or when you're writing a line of code, for example, if I'm writing uh, enter tam in the username field, enter so and so password in the password field, right? So, you're writing it in the programming language of your choice and then it has to execute on the browser, which we have opened right now. So there is an intermediate wall in between, which, which are termed as browser specific drivers, right? So you have to go ahead and you have to use these for you to interact with the browser or with the actual browser, right? So uh, to differentiate, these are termed as browser specific drivers, that is Chrome driver, Gecko driver, or relevant drivers. And this is termed as the actual, the user uh, browser, that is AUT, that is application under test browser, right? You might have a bit of, uh, you know, you, you might be a bit puzzled after looking at this, but in the next section, I'll be talking about the architecture that will give you more clarity. So let's go to that. So it says Selenium web driver architecture. So, okay, give me a second. Yeah. So if you see it very, very concurrently, very, very, uh, you know, uh, if, if you see it in detail, you will see that this is the Selenium client library. So. I just talked about that you have to code your test cases, your test steps in some language. It can be Java, it can be Python, it can be Ruby, it can be C++ or language of your choice. So you, for example, you give the instructions in, in, in of the test steps in that coding language. For example, if you tell the system, enter TAM in username, second step, enter password in the password field, click on login button, and then verify that the user is logged into the uh, system or to the account, right? So all these are different steps that you perform manually, but you have to give them uh, in terms of programming language and then they're automated, right? So this is what you do in Selenium WebDriver. That is, you code it. Your work is done here. Now, when it goes to the browser to actually perform the actions, it is first translated from your programming language into JSON format. So JSON format is, of course, there is a lot of detail to JSON format, but what you need to know is that it is a key value pair combination, right? So uh, with respect to every action, or rather, for example, if you say click on this button, there is a key value which says a click on the button and then some corresponding code to it. We need not enter into the details of it, but yes, the, it is converted into JSON using wire protocol, right? And then it, it, it is sent to the browser driver and then to the actual browser, right? Now, one might question and one might be confused a bit about browser driver and browsers. So all in all, what was the need for browser drivers, you might ask. So, you know, if I had the Selenium, if I had this JSON format, it could directly go ahead and communicate with this UI or this actual browser that I see, which is which we term as AUT or application under test in the browser. So it, it could easily go ahead and interact with this. So why was there a need to make it more complex and add these browser drivers corresponding to the generic browser, right? So uh, answering your question, this comes under one of the OOPS concepts that is, every uh, browser has its own set of code right so now for selenium to interact with this with these browsers for example for uh, firefox or chrome or internet explorer uh, of course they have to you know uh, the the entire code of these browsers have to be shared so these organizations of course will never be willing to share their entire code base with the common people or you know with, with the people with unauthorized access right so what they did is they actually took over all the code, wrapped it up in a box, logged it up, and then gave you that box to use it, right? So everything that you require to automate or to perform the actions is there in, the, in these browser drivers. The code is hidden. The actual code is hidden. You are just given the, uh, I would say, the basic things that you require to interact with the systems. So if you are pl planning to execute your test case on Chrome, you use the Chrome driver that is, Chrome driver, we'll see it in the uh, how it is written actually in the code. And similar is for Mozilla Firefox, similar is for Internet Explorer, right? So that is the reason that these browser drivers came into the picture. So these organizations wanted that their code should be abstracted, hidden from the uh, common people, and the only things that are required to perform the action should be given. So that is why these this concept of browser drivers happened, right? Now, a question to you, I did say that this is uh, this this is based on an OOPS concept. Uh, this this you know introduction of browser drivers to hide the code and everything this is all based on one oops concept 
I want you to think about that OOPS concept and write it down in the comments. And uh, you know, uh, a tip, this is a very, very good interview question. And if you encounter this and if you're able to answer it well, it, it adds brownie points for you, right? So that is what you uh, needed to know about Selenium WebDriver in general. In the next video, we'll be talking about locators and experts. So see you in that video. And thank you so much for watching. Good day. Bye-bye.